welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be explaining how the telescope and all the accessories that go along with it and all its parts work together to take a picture of a star, a planet, even another galaxy. And my goal for you watching is by the end of the video, you will also understand how all of this works together to take a picture. So let's get right into it. To explain the pieces of this system, I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. So the first thing I want to talk about is the tripod. It's just like a regular camera tripod, except it's extremely sturdy, which is important obviously because this gear is heavy and it needs to be supported properly. Uh, the next piece I want to talk about is this guy. So as you may have noticed, there's wires everywhere and this is indeed an electrical system, so it needs a source of power. And this uh, chunk here is a huge lithium ion battery uh, and it has enough energy in it to fuel this system for many hours. Uh, and the last thing you'll notice here at the bottom is this silver box with an antenna on it. This is a remote control. It's a signal transmitter and receiver and I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. So the next piece I want to talk about here is the mount. And the mount attaches to the bottom of the telescope and its main job is to move the telescope. And the reason we want to move the telescope is first to point at an object in the night sky, but also to stay pointing at the object. And the reason I say we need to stay pointing at the object is because the Earth rotates. So from our point of view as somebody on the surface of the Earth, as the Earth rotates, the sky appears to move. And of course it's not actually moving, it's just our point of view as we rotate, but we need to manage that. And the way we manage that is this mount will slowly rotate the telescope and will appear to freeze an object in the frame of the camera, and that'll allow us to take pictures of it. Uh, so next, I'm going to talk about the counterweight. And uh, the reason this counterweight exists is because this stuff is really heavy, and it's all on one side of the mount. So as I talked about, the mount moves. So if it's rotating and there's a lot of weight on one side, it's unbalanced and it'll stress the gears. Uh, so this counterweight adds an equal force on the opposite side to balance it out, and then the mount can rotate with minimal stress. So now uh, the best part, the telescope. So the telescope is just this big optical tube, and uh, a huge misconception about telescopes is that they act like a magnifying glass, and that's not true at all. A lot of objects in the night sky are actually bigger than the full moon. The reason we can't see them, though, is because our eyes are small, and they can't pick up enough light. The objects are too dark. So the telescope's job is to use this huge lens to collect light and focus it to a point down here. And focus light obviously appears much brighter, and that allows us to see and take pictures of things that are dark in the night sky. So this is the camera. Uh, like I just said, the telescope focuses light onto the camera sensor, and that allows us to form an image. Uh, this is a regular camera lens. And this is called the direct focus method, and what that is is I remove the regular lens and attach the telescope. So that way the telescope acts like a giant camera lens. So you can just see a size comparison there. And uh, like I said, the reason for this difference is to collect a lot of light. So by now you've probably noticed this smaller scope on top of the body of the larger telescope, and uh, this purple piece here. And what this is, is it's a guide system. So this is just a regular little telescope, and this purple piece is a camera. And the job of this system is to be my second pair of eyes on the sky. And uh, the reason it's necessary is because even though the mount works to stay on target and it works with the computer, they can't see the sky. And their imperfections, the gears, uh, they might drift off a target. They will drift off a target. Uh, and this is an automatic system that will lock onto a star. And if it finds itself drifting, it'll send correction signals to the silver box and push the mount back on target to make sure that the images are clear and there's no drift or anything like that. So obviously a system like this needs some sort of control center and uh, for me that just acts as my computer. So I, when I'm in the field I use five different softwares to uh, monitor the tracking, control the camera, capture and process images, and to monitor that little silver box that I mentioned earlier which controls the mount. So I'm not going to go over the five softwares in this video because I feel like not enough people would actually be interested, but I'd be happy to talk about them in the comments or if you message me and have any questions. Uh, and lastly, you're probably wondering why it's in a blue recycling bin, and the reason is because uh, during the night dew falls as moisture, and uh, a laptop and moisture don't get along very well, so I keep it protected under this uh, recycling bin. 
So I'm just going to show you guys actually how the telescope moves. So that's pretty cool. You can hear its uh, motors working there. So just to recap everything quickly, this battery is the energy source for the system. The tripod stabilizes everything. The mount moves the telescope to match the rotation of the Earth throughout the night. The telescope focuses light towards the camera, which takes pictures. The guide scope ensures accurate tracking. The counterweight balances everything to relieve stress of the mount. And the computer is the one that processes and controls all of the things. What I just showed was my astrophotography setup. That is the setup I use to take pictures of things. Obviously, my telescope can still be used for observational viewing, and but here you can see the attachments that I put on it, uh, and I'm going to briefly describe each one and how I use it for observations. So this here is the spotter scope, and I showed the guide scope earlier, and this acts in the exact same way except it's got an eyepiece instead of a camera. So this, you would line it up with the main scope and um, scan the night sky with it, just with your eyes, and if you see something of interest, you just look through the main scope to get a better look at it. Uh, these here are filters. This one's a light pollution filter, so it filters out bright city lights, street lights, and just lets you get a better look at the sky. And this one here is a red light filter because a lot of nebula and stars uh, emit red light, and it just accentuates that, both in imaging and viewing. Um, these are eyepieces, so these would slide in place of the camera currently, and just you just look through them there with your eyes. Lastly, this is a diagonal, and so the reason, this is just for convenience because if you can notice, the camera is slided in so that it lines up with the scope, so it would be awkward and annoying to have to bend over to look through it. So this diagonal just goes like that, so you can look at things at a right angle instead of straight through like that. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something, please drop a like and subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to comment. I'll answer all the comments. Uh, I did link my social media at the start of the video, so if you have any questions, feel free to also ask me through there. Um, all this gear is Explore Scientific. They're a great brand. Check them out. Uh, I'm going to link them in the description. So thank you again. Bye.